In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a quadrant or for every quadrant, a border around it. You can see here, this is the negative by negative. This one is the positive negative. And then here we have the positive positive. And here finally we have the positive and the negative of the y-axis side. So let's start to explore how we can color these quadrants. So let's start to explore how to create the quadrant borders in a bubble chart in ChartJS. So the first thing what we need is to get a default code. So for that, we have to go to chartjs3.com getting started. Scroll down here. By the way, this link is also in the description box. And once you scroll down, you copy this entire chunk of code here. Copy this, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you also watch this video here. It explains it all. So then, what I will do is I just paste this all in here. Once I did that, I'll cut out the title here, put it in there, save this, and then refresh. Now we have a border for a bar chart. But what I want to do is I want to convert this into a bubble chart. So in here, I'm going to say bubble, but of course, oops, sorry, but of course, this is still not enough because we need to have the right coordinates. I'm going to remove all of this here, put in here these brackets, oh, like that. And then in here for the bubble, we have the x value, which would be the left or right position or the horizontal position. Let's say here this is number three. Comma, we have the y, and I will say this is the well, this is the vertical, let's put number three as well, and then we have a radius, which would be basically the bubble size. So how many pixels in radius is it? And in this case, I'll just say number three as well. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to paste this multiple times in here. There we are, so now we have, I guess, seven items. And what I will do here, I will make this one a negative. And let's make this six, this nine, and then here three again, and we have six and nine. So then what I want to do is, I want to say here, this and what I want to do here is I want to say six and six and this one will be negative six and negative six. Oh yeah more here maybe six three and six. So if I save this, refresh, you can see here now what we have is we have here on our scale every possible combination. We have here the this part here is the negative negative. We have here as well this part which is negative positive, as you can see it's negative here, but value is number 3 on the x scale, and etc, etc. So what I want to do now is I want to make borders for every quadrant here, where we have here, if one is negative and the other one is positive, or here this one, the y, or basically, or this item here, where it is a positive y and a positive x. So let's start to do that one. So to do this, what I need to do here is, first of all, I'm going in here in the options, or just below the options here, I'm going to put a comma. After the options, I'm going to say a plugin, I'm going to create a custom plugin, and we can call this our quadrant. So we have the quadrant here. So then what I'm going to do here is, I want to, this is the quadrant plugin block, and I'm going to say a quadrant, oh, not even like that, but constant quadrant. And here, ID equals quadrant, and I tend to keep them all consistent, but we will not be using the ID because we, are not, we have no options in here. So then what I have here, the next thing what I want to do is, when do I want to draw this? In this case, we have these grid lines here, and I want to make sure that the grid lines are drawn before the quadrants, but I want to make sure that the data here is drawn after the quadrants has been drawn. So that will mean first the grid lines, then the quadrants, and then we will draw our data sets. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say here before data sets draw, which makes sense. And then here we have three arguments, the chart object. We can use here the arcs for arguments. And finally, we have here the plugin options. Again, the last two I won't be using in this video. So we can skip that because that's directly related to this here. So then we have here this chart object, which consists of everything within the chart. In essence, it would be basically this object here. This is chart, and referring to everything within here. So if I do here console log, say chart, if I save this now, refresh, open up developer tab, nothing happens in here, but you can see here, we get all the information here, and I need a CTX, so we get the ID of the canvas, which is my chart. Because where do I want to draw it on? Well, on this specific chart. So I need to specify the ID itself. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make you an object destruction, but because as you can see, we have here a lot of items that we can use. So I'm going to say here constant. And here, object destruction equals chart, because chart is the object with all the items. So I want to go in here and get, for example, only the CTX, comma. So then from now on, instead of typing in chart.ctx, I can just say CTX, and it will understand exactly what we're referring to. So then we have that. What we can do next one, and um, that will be the chart area. And this chart area will basically get here the items we go back here let's search for chart area you can see here bottom height left right top and width which is basically the borders within the chart area where the chart is being drawn that's a chart area again I have a video for that so you can always refer to that video which is which is called understanding the chart area so what I want to do here top bottom left and right and then finally what I need is I need here the x scale values and the y scale values or these those values must be eventually converted into pixels so we know the exact height of this so that's what you're going to do here I'm going to say skills and in skills I'll say x and y that's it and if you go search in here you will find it eventually somewhere down here uh, let's see is there more if I'm not mistaken there should be one after that platform skills here you are x and y so now we have everything. I'm going to save this, but of course we're not done here. Now let's start to draw a item. So the first thing I'll say is ctx.save, save all variables above. Then what I want to do here is I want to start drawing something simple. So I'm going to say a ctx, as I said, ctx indicates in which chart ID we're drawing. Well, in this case, it's my chart, which is this here. We already indicated that one. So then what I'm going to say here, let's say we're going to have a line width. And this line will be equal to three pixels, so we want to draw the line first. Next, what I want to do is I want to say ctx dot uh, stroke style, which would be the color of the border. For now, I'll just grab one of these colors here. That would be nice. Copy that, put it in here, and put a semicolon here. And then what I want to do here next is to draw now the stroke or the rectangle shape. So I'm going to say a stroke rectangle meaning it will just draw a borderline only no filler so then what i'm going to say here here we need four specific values we need the, here basically the x or basically the starting point on horizontal level so i could say here the left and then but we cannot use these terms because we already have these terms here so there will be a conflict so let's say here x left then we have here the x top then we have here the, oh sorry, not the X top, it's the Y top. And then we have here the X right side, which would be the ending point. And then we have here finally the Y bottom, which would be the bottom. So we're going to make a rectangle shape here. To make it very simple, I'm going to just convert this now all into simple pixels. 10, 10, 10, and 10. The moment I do this, and if I save this, refresh, you can see here now we have this pixel here and you can see here it will indicate 10 pixels it starts here at top I guess 10 pixels from here and as you can see here that is just 10 pixels from the corner and then also 10 pixels from the top so it's here X and Y is 10 and then it starts to calculate so what we want to do now is I want to have specifically let's stop that specifically this area here or the area here above so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just grab it let's start with one of those let's start with the bottom here so how do we do that well first of all we need to have a item that will convert whatever the value here is of minus six into the pixel coordinates of this so what I'm going to say here is the following I'm going to say here X remember the X refers to the scale value here and I'm going to use a command here and say here get value or sorry don't get pixel for value which would be in this case minus six if I save this we should see now a movement and you can see here horizontally it's moving because it's not moving down no it will move matching to here on the vertical level or sorry horizontal level not on the vertical because we are here on the x value 
So now if you want to say we want to match it in the vertical, we're going to copy this, let's put it here, let's put it there, and we're going to say here the Y, and then maybe what would make sense is just to start at the top left here. So that would mean the Y would be equal to 6. So X is minus 6, as you can see here, but Y is 6. Then it should start here. So let's do that one, save that, refresh. All right, so now we have this here. So now what I want to do is I want to go all to, to the end here, which would mean on the right side, which is the next one, this is the right. On the right, I want to go to X0. So let's copy that. Do this. Then you will see something will happen here that is unexpected. If I save that, refresh, there we are. So what is happening here? Well, basically, it is calculating this space here, which is on the left side here, and that needs to be deducted from. Because what it really does, it calculates the pixel coordinate exactly, but it doesn't understand the difference between this here, because it should start here, not at the beginning of the canvas. Because that's why chart area is very important to understand, but we have our chart area information, so we know how many pixels would be this left area to here, which is specifically here the left. So I'm going to copy that, say minus left, save that, refresh, and there we are, uh, let's close this. Let's go down now finally here to this point, which would be X and Y zero. Go here, and once we do that, I'm just going to copy this, and say here, Y, we get the same issue, so refresh, we're going too far, because the top here, with that, that will be maybe about 27 pixels, or maybe 40 pixels, and that's being copied in here. So what I want to do here is, minus the top pixels, if I save that, refresh. There we are. So now we have a nice border. Of course, we want to have four of them. So what we could do, we can copy paste this, but no, I don't want this. So what I'm going to do here first of all, I want to say ctx.restore, meaning I want to reset all the values, whatever we use to reset them. So then what I'm going to do here now is, we have this, and I want to make this now a function. Why? Because we're going to duplicate this four times. So we can make a function to reduce our code redundancy. So what I'm going to say here, function quadrant, and we can say here the function quadrant will have the following items. Well, we're going to put that in here first. Indent it, all right. And then I'm going to say here, what we will have here is the X left. Remember, I'm using X and Y because I want to avoid our mistakes here or this uh, confusion. So I'm going to say X left because we also have here left and top. So the first one is left. This one was top, so we say here y top. Then we have here the right side, so we say here x right. And then we have here the bottom, so we say y bottom. And then what you want to do is the following. I want to replace this, and all I'm going to say here, well, what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to copy this, put it in here as a function. Because right now, if I just do this and I'll just put in here any value, you will see it works, but of course it's not responding yet. So if I save this, refresh, it works as well. However, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this here will be matching with that. So this will be minus 6. This will be number 6. Then we have here 0, and then again 0. So now we have them. So now we have this, but now I want to make sure this x left needs to be here. x left. Then we have here the y top. This should be converted into uh, x right. So exactly matching with this. And finally here the bottom. Copy that and paste that, save that, refresh. Now we have this fully working. But what is interesting here is, for example, if I copy here this, I put in another one, you will see it will work again. So let's put this on, let's say, 0, and then I'm going to say 0, and just put in 6. I don't know exactly what this will happen, but if I refresh, all right. So it does something here, but of course, it's not fully functional. So let's start to work on that now. But of course, what I want to do as well is because maybe you see these colors here, we want to have a unique color. I'm going to say color, uh, or not color. I'll just grab the color, which is this one. I'll cut this out, but I'll say here, this will be a color. So I'm going to say you cut color. Put in here that, and then the next one here, what we could do is maybe just get another color, I'm going to get this beautiful color here, put that in there, 
and we have here blue one if I save this now refresh you can see now this is blue all right so let's start to work on this and let's give every one of these a proper body so how does it start we start at 0, 0.0 so then we're going uh, that's our 0, 0.0 that's the top so then to the right side we're going to 6 all right from 6 then I need to go down there will be 6 as well so this should be number 6 as well so if I refresh nope apparently I'm mistaken no it should go down to minus 6 all right so let's do that save that refresh and let's see are we having something here or apparently not so uh, so this is slightly tr a struggle let me double check all right so after some checking I figured it out I guess we have to convert it into 0 and 0 so if you're wondering why is that the case so apparently it, it is a shape meaning a shape will auto close itself so that would mean that we had our lines here already so let's go back if I put this back here save that refresh so we had these lines here and it will start to auto close itself so when we stop here at this point when we go back to zero zero it would indicate a closing of that so that is the ending point of it so the shape itself I understand it becomes a rectangle so we don't have to specify it very exactly However, it can be confusing if you have it like this. But anyway, we have this one now. Let's start to do the other two, and then we are done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this. And let's look at this one, and let's put it here. Zero. We go here from zero to six. That's here. Six, zero. All right. And then let's see if this one already works, because then we want to go for it. No, not at all. Save that and refresh. There we are. So what I want to do is I just want to give this a different color. Let's copy this color here. That should be a yellow color. Save that, refresh. There we are. So here it starts 0, 06, and then it says you go to 0, and then the ending is 0, 0. So basically it understands this one here. So final item here is this. So what will be this one? Let's give it a nice green color or the fourth color in here. Put that in there. And then here we have to calculate again. So what I want to do is I want to start at minus six here. And then the position on the item here should go, or we are left at minus six, then we go to zero, if you go up, and then we maintain at zero, zero. We go to zero here, and we stay at zero, and then eventually this part will be automatically closed. All right. So we say here, minus six. We're going to put this on zero, and let's put in this one and one just for, for the sake of it. All right. So then we want to go here because this is number one here, so it automatically understands it. So if I put it on zero, it will close this immediately. So if I say here to zero, save. There we are, and a one. You have here the, the difference here. All right, so put in zero, and that's it. So now we have quadrants here, and with this, you can make a lot of nice, interesting charts as well. That's basically it for this item. So if you enjoyed this video, and maybe you want to know even more about chart area, then I'm going to recommend you this specific video, what I indicated previously, understanding chart area and chart JS, because we can do a lot more with this, and this is extremely useful once you understand it, because for plugins, you can do here almost additional items you can do very, very much uh, extras in here. So I highly recommend you to watch this one as well if you want to learn more about this topic.